Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a brand new feature that's available inside of Microsoft Teams and Power Automate that's going to allow us to go ahead and create an Azure DevOps bug by simply clicking on a button inside of the chat message. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So naturally you hear a lot of studies and just information around the cost of context switching. So what that means is you're focused on one specific activity and then all of a sudden you get distracted or interrupted sometimes by others and your mind has to switch across different tasks. And so that can actually be highly disruptive because it can lead you down this path of getting distracted again, distracted again, and two hours later you realize that you never actually got done what you were trying to get done two hours ago. And so that's why this one's important. We're gonna show you in the demo how we can be inside of the conversation itself that you might be having with someone else and give the opportunity to essentially escalate that conversation into basically an automation. And in this case, we can use Power Automate and the new for a selected message trigger that exists for Microsoft Teams in Power Automate to go ahead and kick off this process. We're also gonna see adaptive cards in this demo itself where we can actually present an immersive experience to capture additional information beyond what is available inside of the card itself. Now, this is a, a huge thing. Like this is, sometimes I get asked the question like, you know, why Power Platform? Why should we do Power Platform versus, you know, technology ABC? And like, this is one of it, like this is, a, an experience that both Power Automate team and the Microsoft Teams team deliberately put together. And this truly becomes one of those better together stories. And another thing is that we do always want to be able to capture data in the right system. And if we create a lot of friction in capturing that data, then what happens is usually the data doesn't get captured at all, or it's not overly accurate. And that just leads to more problems. So this is the last sort of benefit that we'll talk about here is that we now can capture solid data and preserve productivity, which is what every organization is trying to achieve. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, before we get into the demo, there's a few prerequisites I do wanna call out. So do make sure you're using the latest version of Teams. That's always just a good practice. And then the other thing is you need to go ahead and install the Power Automate app. It looks like it's still being labeled as Flow, um, but what you can do inside of the Microsoft Teams team or the Microsoft Teams app, you can go ahead and click on apps in the bottom left hand corner. And then what you'll see is be able to look for flow, click on that, click on add, and you will be set from that perspective. There's one other thing I do want to call out and that is the default environment. Yes, our favorite environment. Here we need to make sure that the flows that we do create are inside the default environment to ensure they get listed in Teams. And so this is, I, I believe, probably the, the rationale here is is likely because everyone has access to the default environment. So by this, by doing so, you ensure that everyone can go ahead and access as opposed to worrying about all of the different environments that a company might have itself. Here's a link where you can go ahead and just find out more information about this itself. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's see a demo. Okay, so obviously we're talking about DevOps here and naturally you need to have an instance of DevOps that you can connect to in order for this scenario to work out. As part of my DevOps instance, I've just created a project called Project Phoenix, 
and then naturally we have a board and we have a series of work items and then naturally you can break those down into sprints etc. Here is uh, an example of uh, a bug that I had created. We're going to go ahead and create a new bug as part of this demo itself. Now here we are inside of Microsoft Flow and this is generally your starting point when it comes to this. You don't start out in Teams, you start out in Power Automate. And so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and search for the Microsoft Teams connector as part of your trigger and then find for a selected message and this will be your trigger itself. When you go ahead and add this trigger to your canvas, what's going to happen is you have the ability to go ahead and edit an adaptive card. Now, the adaptive card, they do provide you with a sample. You can go ahead and modify the existing sample, or you can go ahead and click on new card, and then basically go ahead and, and populate it. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details here, but it is a pretty simple experience, at least for creating something simple like what I've done. You can go ahead and use things like your text block to go ahead and create different text attributes, and then what you can do is create fields. So in this case, we've got like input text, and so we can go ahead and provide input text and then naturally, kind of like when you're in .NET, C Sharp or VB.NET, you want to go ahead and provide an ID and a name your controls essentially accordingly. At the end, we'll go ahead and we'll click on the submit button and uh, well, or add a submit button so that an end user can complete this. Then we can go ahead and just save and close, save our card and just close it. And then when we go back, it'll be stored as part of our flow itself. So that's, that's as simple as going ahead and creating our adaptive card. Then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and find the DevOps connector. So here we can just go ahead and type in DevOps and go ahead and click on the DevOps connector and then go ahead and click on create a new work item. Naturally, we're going to need a connection. And so this is where we essentially just go ahead and log in to our you know our service itself using our own credentials and we will then have a connection that we can go ahead and use now what we do need to do is we need to populate some data so we were capturing some different fields previously in our adaptive card right and so what we could go ahead and I see that I've lost one when I re reset my connection so let me just go ahead and add that what we can go ahead and do is just look for the various fields that we're interested in and then populate them. So for example, we have a title and this is a mandatory field. So as a result, we created a bug title as part of our adaptive card. And so when we go ahead and click on our dynamic content, we can see all of the different value that's available. And so we've got the, the, the attributes or the metadata that Microsoft Teams is providing. But then what we also have is all of the fields that we had created custom, our custom fields itself. So we have access to both. Uh, we can get like the message subject, the link message, the message content of the original message that we're going to launch this adaptive card from. And then we can capture the additional information that we're going to prompt the end user for. And that's exactly what I've done here. Now, one thing to note, I do have an expression here. And the reason for that is I have a drop down list. And we'll see this when we run the demo for our priority one, two, three, four. Those are stored as strings. But uh, what's going to happen inside of Azure DevOps is they want an integer. So what we're going to do is just use an expression to convert that string into an integer so that that gets sent in correctly. And then lastly, we have the repo steps. So we can go ahead and just save our flow here. And then what we'll do is flip over to Teams and kick this off. Okay, so I'm in Microsoft Teams. In this case, I am in the context of a team conversation. But it doesn't have to be uh, you know, related to that. It can just be related to a chat as well. And what I mean by that is when I went and saved my flow and I created it, created a new DevOps bug, what I can now do is access it from either chat conversations like I'm in here, or what I can do is go back into my team and be part of a, a team context. So here we've got Project Phoenix, and here we've got a message that just indicates that you know, someone's been doing some testing, trying to automate the journal entry for the RPA process and the bots having some trouble finding the cost center selector. So what I can do with this information is I can go ahead and click on the ellipsis, click on more actions, and then create a new DevOps bug. And so here's our adaptive card that gets loaded for us. And we need to provide a title.
provide a, a priority. So this is what I was talking about before, where we have a series of integers that need to land inside of DevOps itself. And then we'll provide repo steps. Uh, so we can just say log in, navigate to WE02. There we go. And now what we can do is just go ahead and click submit. And when we do this, this is information is going to get sent back into our Power Automate flow. And we can check that by going back into the Power Automate Maker portal, finding our last run. And then here we can see the information that was passed, right? Bug description value, bug priority, repo steps. And then we go ahead and create our bug inside of Azure DevOps. So let's head back over to Azure DevOps. And then let's just go ahead and just do a refresh. And sure enough, we see our bug is right here. And we can then go ahead and further triage it, assign it, figure out what iteration we want to pass it into. And those are certainly fields you can go ahead and you know pass in when you create it itself as part of the DevOps connector. But it really depends on how much information you want to collect up front. But generally, you're going to have some sort of person that's overseeing the ship the shipping or the ship coordinator that would probably want some insight and prioritization as well. And from here, you can go ahead and assign it, add tags, etc. So something that's uh, very quite simple, but very powerful. And I think once again, that value is if I'm in teams, you know, I love DevOps, but like anytime I need to open up another system, I'm like, oh, like, oh, another system, right? But here, if I can just go ahead and quickly create that, and in some ways actually push that back, to the user itself or the, the colleague and do more self-service, like that becomes even more of a win. So hopefully you enjoyed this and I'd encourage you to go ahead and check it out for yourself. All right, so thanks for checking out this episode. Look for another episode soon. And uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to do so. You can find me at Weirzy. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, it would be great if you'd go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoy this content, likes are always appreciated as well. So take care and we'll see you soon back on the channel.